First, the Luftwaffe has a master interrogator whose strategy is to be as good as possible. Hans Scharf is a master interrogator who strongly opposes torture and physical abuse. His techniques were so successful that the U.S. military later incorporated his methods into their own interrogation schools. Scharf's best tactics for gathering information from prisoners include going for a nature walk without guards, cooking home-cooked food for them, making jokes, drinking beer and afternoon tea with the Aces Post. He even visited other POWs and held pool parties. And on rare occasions, even test flights of German fighters. Second, in ancient Asia, execution by elephant was a common form of execution. Since elephants are very intelligent and easy to train, it is also quite easy to train them to be executioners and torturers. They can be taught to slowly break bones, crush skulls, twist limbs or even execute people with large blades attached to their tusks. In some parts of Asia, this method of execution remained common until the late 19th century. Third, the British government collected the postcards as intelligence for the D-Day landings. Since 1942, the BBC has made a public appeal for postcards and photographs of the continent's coastlines. Europe, from Norway to the Pyrenees. This is an intelligence-gathering exercise. Initiated by Lieutenant General Frederick Morgan, he searched for the most difficult to defend beaches. Postcards were sent to the War Office and contributed to the decision to choose Normandy as the location for possible D-Day landings. Fourth, when Marcus Crassus died, molten gold poured down his throat. Marcus Licinius Crassus was known to be the richest man in Rome during his lifetime. The Parthians poured molten gold down his throat as a symbol of his desire for wealth. Fifth, Germany detects 2,000 tons of unexploded bombs every year. During World War II, the Allies dropped about 2.7 million tons of bombs on Nazi-occupied Europe. Half of them landed in Germany. Before construction work can begin in Germany, the ground must be thoroughly investigated for unexploded ordnance. Bombs are sometimes discovered spontaneously. One example dates back to 2011, 45,000 people were evacuated from their homes when a drought exposed a 4,000-pound blockbuster bomb lying on the bed of the Rhine in the middle of Koblenz. Sixth in ancient Greece, wearing skirts was manly. In fact, the ancient Greeks viewed trousers as effeminate and would mock any man who wore them. Seventh a birthday greeting card has more computing power than the entire Allied army during World War II. I bet Hitler, Churchill, Stalin and Roosevelt would kill to get one of these cards. The computer chips they contained were so powerful that the rulers of the time could not imagine that we would throw them away. Eighth in 1386, a pig was executed in France. There wasn't a great detail of civil rights in the Middle Ages, and as it turns out there weren't a great of animal rights either. So much so that they were even subject to human justice. One such case happened in Falaise, France, where a pig attacked a child's face who went on to later die from their wounds. The pig was arrested, kept in prison, and then sent to court where it stood trial for murder, was found guilty and then executed by hanging. Ninth Cleopatra's reign was closer to the moon landings than the construction of the Great Pyramid. This is one of those things that gives you a sense of how vast the life of the Egyptian Empire actually was. Cleopatra ruled from 51 BC to 30 BC, some 2,500 years after the Great Pyramid of Giza was erected, about 2580 BC, 2560 BC, and about 2,000 years before the first moon landings in 1969. 10th Shrapnel gets its name from its creator. Officer Henry Shrapnel of the British Army was the first to create an anti-personnel shell capable of transporting a large number of rounds to their target before discharging them. This was all happening at a far larger distance than the present rifle fire.